Whatever, it's all new situation for all of us, I suppose. Uh, Isidora, Sanya, and I discussed how to use uh, this uh, situation or occasion in the best way. Uh, so, what we uh, propose to do today is uh, I will make a short introduction introducing people who participated as a presenter on this session just saying the titles to see who we are and uh, uh, then we can open uh, uh, we will go i will say something short about the first presentation uh, not much about presentation but maybe my impression of presentation uh, this way uh, we would like to uh, avoid uh, retelling of what, of what has already been said so, if you agree, uh, we can start this session simply by giving some short uh, impression of what we heard from your uh, 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 presentations. And uh, our time now we can use in uh, discussing, maybe upgrading what already has been said. So, uh, I would like uh, to uh, use this time, not me, not me just our team to use this time as a sort of upgrading or creative completion of what what has been already said or presented if you agree hope you agree <laughs> okay we agree <laughs> <laughs> okay we may vote but but it's not democracy so okay it's just proposal uh, okay 
Uh, in this session, uh, we had uh, uh, five presentations totally. Uh, first one was uh, Krasimira Frangova. She uh, spoke about uh, the name of presentation, as you have seen, was the curious case of education as conservator. Uh, and uh, next is Vladimir Kudryavtsev with his imagination and uh, imitation. Uh, the third presenter was Anna Marianovic Shane. Uh, her presentation uh, was titled Opportunities and Challenges for a Dialogical Approach to Art Education in Conventional Schools. Uh, we have Isi uh, Monica Miller. Uh, her presentation was the development of artistically gifted children, a relational anthropological talent approach. And finally, uh, the last presentation on this session was Isidora Korac. Uh, her presentation was a horizontal learning as professional development, art teacher's perspective. Uh, so, uh, before we start, uh, of course, uh, feel free uh, to uh, interrupt or just raise your hands or uh, turn on your microphone if you wish to add something to to uh, presentation and now i'm going to say something short about our first presenter and uh, this way to invite her to uh, not to <laughs> retell us what has already been said but uh, what what is the further step we can make out of all these beautiful things we heard so Krasimira, you talked to us about the case of education of a conservator, uh, explaining how this education is uh, uh, conceptually organized, uh, how I understood your work in this field for a longer period, and uh, your approach, uh, uh, you try to give as much general picture of what's going on as it is possible. Uh, for me, somehow, I mean, that's, that's my point of view, uh, for me somehow there were some very interesting parts in your presentation especially uh, when you spoke about uh, conservation uh, 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 as a field between art and the science not just skill not just technique but yes it has this component but in the same time uh, it is also uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, going into the field of art. It's not just skill. And that was interesting part for me, if you can tell us something more about that. And altogether, uh, uh, you're uh, mentioning responsibility. How I understand this responsibility is actually something you wish to uh, transfer to your students, to people you teach, how you see this responsibility. That was interesting as a value for me. If you, so Krasimira, if you agree, this is just my impulse, but you may say whatever you wish now. Just use this, this session for that. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you for organizing this forum. Um, I think it is important to be able to talk about education as such and discuss the, um, the approaches to uh, teaching and also learning because uh, we are in a dynamic era where things are changing quite fast as we, we saw the last year. Um, and we need to find the, um, or use the possibilities that we are often offered and see, look at them exactly as possibilities, but not as, as challenges. Um, yes, I think, I, I think it is, um, important to understand the uh, education of, of, a of a conservator as a discipline that covers quite a wide range of knowledge and, and skills and competences that one needs to obtain during the, uh, the period they are um, at the university or, or an art academy. Um, and sometimes it's, it, it feels a little bit overwhelming on both sides. On, on the side of the educators and on the side of the students, because they, the students at least, they feel um, intimidated by the amount they need to, to manage within that short time, because the, the bachelor degree is, is only three years, right? Um, and I think one of the, the biggest 
steps that they need to take is to overcome their fear of working with the objects. Uh, because, um, as, as said, we are trying to teach them or trying to give them this perspective of looking of, on, on the art objects um, as something that bears um, quite a large set of different values. And what we are trying to do is to preserve all those values at the same time. Um, so one of the comments that we often hear from the students is that they are afraid of not damaging this, uh, these objects they are working with further. Um, so yeah, um, that's the, um, but this, this is something that one can gradually obtain this confidence that I know enough and I can enough to be able to fulfill the, uh, the expectations of, of what I can, um, of, of, uh, of the object that I'm working with. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, one needs to be familiar with what the materials can. So what their, pro their properties are and uh, by, by knowing the, the buildup of, of the materials, not only the materials that are used to create an, an artwork, but also the materials that we are using as conservators and how these two different types of, of materials work together um actually helps us to foresee what the long-term expectations of uh, um, of the condition of those artworks are so this is why it is important to be very very aware of um of the properties of, of the different materials so this is where the science uh, part of our education helps quite a lot yeah, I don't know whether I, I answered your questions. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Thank you. And uh, now we can invite uh, somebody Hi. else among presented people if somebody wants to, to comment or say something. Daniela, uh, you are interested. Yes, I would like. <laughs> yes. Um... Um, thank you, Krasi, uh, for, uh, for this presentation and the idea of uh, introducing uh, um, so methodology of, of instruction uh, or, or, or ways of teaching and conservation. Uh, uh, for me, it was very interesting and uh, is, is very interesting as there are uh, so many, as Krasi said, different uh, fields or different uh, sciences that we have to combine together and uh, and yes responsibility for the students they they often are blocked i agree totally with uh, that and uh, um, uh, the idea to introduce this as a as a topic in this conference is uh, because uh, uh, conservation is linked with art and is very often taught uh, on art academies, but is quite uh, specific relating to other uh, <clears throat> other art fields that maybe are covered by by other other presentations. And uh, because of the value of the objects that uh, are conserved, uh, um, I think that we uh, need to to talk and to exchange experiences and to develop and uh, uh, improve uh, our methodological approaches in teaching conservation, particularly regarding that there is really limited time that has to be divided into theoretical and practical work. Of course, I think that uh, in conservation, like many other fields, but here it is really, really so important, uh, lifelong learning is uh, something that at least I try to teach my students that when they finish uh, their, their studies, formal studies, they, they have to continue studying all the time. So I think this is uh, really uh, the topic that can be further developed. Uh, teaching science, for example, for conservators is a really specific and chemists, uh, professors of chemistry, general analytical chemistry, often are confused, for example, when talking to conservation students, like they, uh, it, it's a really specific field even for them. Um, and uh, 
So I think there are a lot of uh, there is a lot of space to to improve, and I hope that we will create some kind of platform and to uh, to to broaden it and to um, join other platforms that I heard from Prestimira exist already uh, in European level uh, in the way of developing methodologies for teaching. Okay, thank you, Daniela. And what I also would like to uh, uh, add to this discussion is I uh, feel through all these presentations we have, uh, I am very interested and I'm very fascinated how different uh, approaches bring some uh, same uh, common specific uh, ideas together. And in all our presentation, uh, I feel some sort of uh, need uh, among all of us to link education with, with the society. Somehow education from time to time uh, tends to go somewhere for itself, like it is system within the system and start somehow being uh, uh, insensitive to social changes. And we are now... Uh, witnesses of situation uh, when education has to follow the changes, the very deep structural changes within not just simple societies, particular societies, but uh, the world community and society. So this is what I feel through all your presentation, this need to link, be linked with the reality. Okay, now Isidora, if you don't mind, thank you, thank you both, uh, Krasimir and Daniela. Isidora, if you don't mind, I, I would like to give you the word, so you are the next. Is it okay? Please turn on the microphone. Okay, I hope everyone, uh, the next uh, uh, is uh, Vladimir, Professor Vladimir Kudyavce. Can you... Uh, uh, Sonia uh, says that uh, uh, you will tell uh, you will uh, have a presentation on Russian, so we need a help maybe for, for a translator. Yes. Da, imaćemo pomoć. Uključena je koleginica Vesna Janjević Popović i Vesnu ćemo zamoliti da moderira i da nam prevodi na srpski jezik. Mislim da je jedina koleginica Krasimira ovde sa engleskog govornog područja, pa ću moliti onda Bojanu da koliko je moguće prevede, dakle imat ćemo dvostruki prevod. Hvala lepo. So, Vladimir, you can speak on Russian, Vesna will help you about translating and I think everything will be okay. Доброе утро. Я начну по-английски. I once had an amusing situation in Japan when I was uh, in le how lecture. I sit down at a computer with the Japanese version of Word and boldly click the menu in which everything was in hieroglyphics. My Japanese college joke, how well you know Japanese. <laughs> Word after all is uh, also a kind of variety of the Esperanto of culture. And McDonald's too. No, так у меня не получится по-русски. Бегало, как получилось с меню, поэтому я перехожу на русский язык. Но с Эмени не это успело там. Как в Японии не получится, да. да, да. Дело в том, что проблема воображения в значительной степени в культурно-исторической традиции, которая идет от Льва Семеновича Выгодского, связана вообще с пониманием того, что такое культура. Polazeći od kulturno-istorijske pristupa, polazim u stvari od pojma šta je to kultura još od Vigotskog. Filosof, rasijski filosof, ja štaju što je to jedan od krupnijših filosofa 
20 века Эвель Тыленков писал, что культура – это то, что люди создают друг для друга, и поэт, поэтому это их объединяет в пространстве и времени истории. Оно, что бы я рекал за философа Иленкова, кое обележава 20 век, есть, что он, что он рекал, да и культура – оно, что люди створяют едни за друге. Вот то, он... что имеет значение для всех, но при этом делает людей за счет этого не безразличными друг другу, если они даже не знакомы и даже не подозревают о существовании друг друга. Но, вот, скажем, люди, которые пользуются ложкой, вилкой, ножом, уже не могут принимать пищу иначе. Это один круг людей, пусть они даже бесконечно не похожи друг. Оно, что важно, есть, да люди не су равнодушны одни према другим, чак и ако се не познаю и не че се упознати и не су свесни постојања оног другог. Люди користе кашику, вилјушку, нож, а више не могу да једу другачије. Они су један круг люди и ако се бескрајно разликују. А в одной из своих лекций по общей психологии, которые, которые были прочитаны на психологическом факультете МГУ мой учитель Василий Давыдов, кстати, большой друг и коллега нашего общего друга, нашего общего классика, нашего общего учителя Ивана Ивича, вот так иллюстрировал работу воображения. Он говорил, что чашка – это, по сути дела, образ черпающей руки, ну, черпает, да? а тут чашка, перенесенный на материал. У jednom od svojih predavanja opšte psihologije Moskovskog državnog univerziteta čuveni Vasil Vasiljević Davidov, inače učitelj Kudrijavceva i veliki prijatelj našeg profesora Ivana Ivića, rekao je da je Šolja u suštini, kad je ilustrovao pojam mašte, da je u suštini ruka koja zahvata prebačena u materijal. Но дело в том, что все-таки чашка, ложка, ножка, вилка – это не только образ черпающей руки. Это еще и образ каких-то культурных людей, которые садятся за стол, о которых мы говорили, и не рвут пищу руками и зубами, или там не разбивают, допустим, камни руками. Вот мы сервируем стол, и я как бы вижу всех вас, рассаживающимися за этим столом, хотя вы еще не пришли ко мне в гости. И если ребенок не научится, вернее, ребенок может научиться пользоваться любым предметом культуры, только прилагая для этого силу воображения, учитывая то, что вокруг любого предмета культуры могут собраться люди. Шоля, кашика, нож, вилюшка – Nije samo slika ruke koja uzima, to je šta je važno. Važno je da u stvari mi na taj način posredujemo. Više, to su kulturni ljudi koji više ne, ne trgaju hranu rukama i zubima. Kada postavljamo sto i kao da vidimo ljude da sede i da su prisutni. I mi onda imamo... Mm -hmm odnos, kao da vidimo sve te koji će doći, a to možemo jedino umašti. Uvidjeti, skažem, vot v kamni budući topor, kada vi djelujete iz kamni topor prvobitnom čovjekom, eto pol djela, eto ne vse djela. Glavno je uvidjeti v topore teh, kto im bude poljivati. Nevidimi, ne podajući se pod šetu krug ljudi, koji potom budu poljivatelji etoho topora. Поэтому и в камне проступает образ топора не только для меня одного, для того, чтобы совершить какое-то отдельное действие, но и для всех. Вот именно так рождает воображение культуру. Ну, представьте себе, добрый человек нанес зарубку на дереве, проблуждав днями, днями в лесу и, наконец, найдя выход из этого леса. Но он сделал зарубку, он подумал не только о себе. Он не знает, кто там потеряется в этом лесу. Это, может быть, тысячи плутающих. Но он их уже спас в своем воображении, нанеся этот знак на э, дерево. Ако видим у камену будучу секиру, 
to je već uspeh. Glavno je u sekiri videti njene buduće korisnike, nebrojivi krug ljudi koji mogu da koriste sekiru. Zato se slika u sekire u kamenu pojavljuje ne samo za mene, već i za sve. Tako mašta rađa kulturu. Dobar čovek je napravio zarez na drvetu danima lutajući šumom u potrazi za izlazo. Mislio je ne samo na sebe i mislio je na sve one ljude kojima će to biti potrebno. E toga nema i na sve one ljude koji on mogao da spasi u svojoj mašti. Zato je neophodna mašta. Окей. Сейчас, соответственно, я сделаю также сейчас большой рассказ про Курганова, про пример. И ты его полностью, ладно, переведешь сразу? Ладно. Он у тебя есть. есть. Я ничего менять там да. не буду. Создатели культуры – это, в общем, не только авторы великих произведений, хотя, безусловно, и Гамлет, и э, симфонии Шекспи... э, Бетховена, и те, общая теория относительности объединяет нас вокруг себя по-своему. Но это и дети. Ну, скажем, вот э, это легко просмотреть на следующем примере. В целях введения понятия точка на уроках математики в первом классе есть такая программа «Школа диалог культур». Педагог Сергей Курганов, недавно, к сожалению, покинувший нас, нас преждевременно, использовал очень простое задание. Я потом решил воспользоваться им, вынеся за рамки математического содержания и слегка видоизменив. Он давал это младшим школьникам, а я это давал дошкольникам старшим на занятиях по физкультуре. Значит, предлагалось сделать все просто. Собраться в одном месте детям. Но так, чтобы это было выполнено быстро, слаженно, а со стороны выглядело красиво. Надо сказать, что я это пробовал делать на взрослых. К сожалению, мы не можем попробовать это сделать здесь, в онлайне. А это было бы очень интересно, потому что дети и взрослые решают задачи примерно одинаково. Ну, например, вот в университете Финляндии у студенты, видимо, я добавил студентам это задание, видимо, услышав слово «красиво», стали объединяться в пары и бесшумно подтанцовывать так трогательно ко мне. То есть подтанцовывать получалось, а собраться вместе нет. То есть вот в массе студенты мало чем отличались от дошкольников. Они толкались, они шумели, они пытались хаотично сбиваться в кучи. Но среди и маленьких, и больших, причем среди маленьких, среди детей чаще, находились единицы, кто предлагал вначале пометить место сбора. Ну, скажем, положить игрушку, положить сумку, положить мячик, что-то такое, да? Чтобы затем спокойно, без суеты собраться вокруг него. Очевидно, что единицы и большинство решали, вот эти единицы, которые предлагали э, пометить место, и большинство решали разные задачи. Большинство на выполнение действий, поэтому был хаос, было броуновское движение, непродуманное и неосмысленное. А единицы на координацию действий. Человек, который говорит, вот давайте соберемся вокруг, допустим, вот этой пирамидки, да, он, по сути дела, решает задачу не на исполнение, а на управление. Воображение впрямую связано с управлением. И хитрость здесь заключается в том, что решить задачу на исполнение можно только решить задачу на управление. Вот кто-то помечает место сбора и таким образом изобретает знак. И тут это очень важно, потому что мы часто трактуем Выгодского как авторы теории, согласно которой э, люди все-таки пользуются готовыми знаками. Это совершенно не так, если внимательно читать Выгодского и Кассирера, и других, ряд, ряд других авторов, мы увидим, что изобретение, творение знака является самым главным. А знак – это типичный объект, или точнее агент культуры. Место, обозначенное игрушкой и рисункой, вокруг него еще никто не собрался. Но! Исполнительная задача фактически решена в общем и целом. На 90%. Для того, чтобы соблюсти ее условия, остается только подойти вот к этому объекту, которым, которым обозначается ситуация. Да, окей, окей. 
Priča je o tome da tvorci kulture nisu samo autori velikih dela, makar govorili o Hamletu ili o simfonijama. I navodi primer uvođenja pojma tačke na časovima matematike u okviru programa Škola dijaloga kulture pedagoga Kurganova, koji je koristio jednostavan zadatak koji sam također odlučio da upotrebim u Finskoj sa studentima prevazilazići matematički sadržaj i neznatno ga modifikujući. U različitim zemljama jedan od autora je to predložio i zadatak je bio da se okupe na jednom mestu, ali tako da se to uradi brzo i lepo i da spolja izgleda lepo. I studenti su očigledno upali u ovu posle, u zamku ove posljednje reči, ujedinili su se u parovima, plesali jedni prima drugima. Ispostavilo se da se plešu, guraju kao i mala deca, ali ne i da se okupljaju. Većina studenta se malo razlikovala od preškolaca. Gurajući i praveći buku pokošavali su nasumično da stanu, ali među njima, često među decom i češće, bilo je samo nekoliko onih koji su ponudili da prvo obeleže mesto okupljanja, stave torbu, igračku, a zatim se mirno okupljaju okupe oko nje. Očigledno je da se manjina i većina rešavali različite zapravo probleme. Većina zadatak izvođenja radnje, a nekoliko koordiniranje radnje. Oni orijentisani, jedni orijentisani na izvršenje, a ovi drugi na upravljanje. Trik je ovdje da se prvi ne može rešiti sam bez onog drugog. I okupljanje je nepodnošljiv uslov za jednu osobu ako će svi problem rešiti na izvršni račin. Ako neko obeležava mesto, izmišlja znak, znak je tipičan objekt, agent kulture. I ono što u Vigodskom imamo, zašto je važan znak? Mesto je označeno igračkom ili torbom, još se nije niko okupio oko nje, ali je zadatak zapravo rešen. Znači, Kako bi se ispunili uslovi, ostaje samo pristup na ovaj način. Onaj ko odredi mesto okupljanja vidi situaciju očima svih njegovih učesnika sa stanovišta svakog od njih. Znači, pojam znaka, mi stvaramo znak. I toga ne može biti bez mašte i ideje o tome zapravo šta treba svi da uradimo. Ideja da mogu da se stave u položaj onog drugog. Vladimir. То есть вот тот, кто обозначает это место сбора, он видит ситуацию глазами всех ее участников с позиции каждого из них. Ему не нужно специально подставляться на место там, Ивана, Джона, Якова, Пети, Маши, Даши. Достаточно просто положить игрушку. Тогда и, и у этих детей, у Маши, у Пети, у Даши, у Ивана, возникает такой же широкий взгляд на ситуацию. И они могут увидеть себя друг друга в этой ситуации, увидеть себя самих друг друге, что самое важное. То есть смотреть <связать> на ситуацию с позиции разных людей вот, в пределах всего человеческого рода, это и есть способность по воображению по Ильенкову, который в значительной мере опирается на Иммануила Канта. Это и есть взгляд на мир глазами культуры. Оно, что сад наводи, есть ова ситуация у ствари, да дете може да се постави или особа, да размишля на начин било кое друге особе која се налазила у тој групи и оно што је само један број схватио на почетку, а после сви да имају исти широки поглед на ситуацију. И они ће моћи да виде у тој ситуацији друге, da vide jedni druge u drugima i mašta omogućava da pogledamo ponovo situaciju sa pozicije različitih ljudi. I to je ono što o čemu govori kako videti očima kulture, to je ono što govori i Ljenkov i ono što je on preuze od Kanta. Znači, vjesno, mi sad prihodimo kusučku i brasovim na stranicu 3 конец игры, чтобы сэкономить время. Ну, ладно. Про, про игру. Сейчас дальше про игру пойдет, да, сразу? Про пить. Да, сразу. Окей. Значит, почему так важна даже простейшая сюжетно-ролевая игра в этом плане? 
Вот, ну, в классическом примере, ребенок садится на палочку. Он уже не только Петя Иванов, например, по-русски говорят, да, или Владимир Кудрявцев, но еще и наездник. Но ведь он может быть при этом кавалеристом, может быть ковбоем, может быть спортсменом, может быть просто любителем верховой езды, неважно. Просто наездник, фигура условно и абстрактная. Поэтому ну, в иной ситуации, если дошкольнику предложить вывести понятие человека вообще, он не справится. А в игре это естественно. Поэтому игра, к тому же ранняя, хотя не самая первая, является школой абстракции и обобщения. В игре впервые в свою жизнь ребенок как бы впускает в фигуру другого человека, но не просто другого, а вот того человека, который Джордж Герберт Митт, американский социолог, социальный психолог, называл обобщенным другим. Оно, что важно, да и игра кодеце. Zapravo kada kao kod našeg zmaja na štapu niste samo taj taj dečak, nego ste jahač, konjani, kauboj, sportista. Slika je uslovna, abstraktna i to je čovek uopšte. I preškolac to ne može da zamisli osim u igrovnoj situaciji. I igra donosi po prvi put tu vrednost, u stvari lik generalizovanog drugog čoveka uopšte. Što okay. navodi i američki psiholog Джордж mm. Митт. Ah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. A, i budem šao zakrugljati, perihođem na četvrtu i vniz. Srazu primjer s uh, maličkom, ktorý bol neuravnavešen. Ladna. Da, i budem šao završati, što bi u nas vreme už istikajt. Ja Ladna. Da. A, znači, vod, eto obopšenna pozicija, sobstveno govoria, и ведет, ведет к тому, что у ребенка возникает произвольность, как э, высшая психическая функция по Выгодскому. Я приведу очень простой пример, и на этом, наверное, завершу свое выступление, потому что иначе мы будем очень долго говорить. Если будут вопросы, я на них постараюсь ответить. Мне как-то довелось консультировать вначале старшего дошкольника, потом он стал первоклассником. Очень такой способный, сообразительный мальчик. При этом типичный холерик. Ему поставили диагноз, правда, значит, гиперактивность и синдром дефицита внимания. На нем он модный. Он такой скорый на руку, порывистый. В миг захватывается любым делом, но крайне неуравновешенный, подверженный резким спадам настроения. Ну, как вот говорят взрослые, плохо управляемый. И со стороны, а главное, изнутри. Ну, понятно, что холерику, тем более с диагнозом, ну, не очень понятным, правда, гиперактивность, трудно овладеть по выгодскому своим поведением. То есть проблема состояла в том, что при выполнении заданий, над которыми нужно было работать там где-то 5-7 минут, у мальчика полностью исчезал только, его хватало на 2-3 минуты, у него полностью исчезал интерес, полностью пропадала, она начисто пропадала одержимость и целеустремленность, которая его характеризовала. Имел сам прилику, да советуем jednog pametnog dečaka koji je imao probleme sa namernom pažnjom, tipičnu koleričnu osobu koja je neuravnotežen, podložen naglim promenama raspoloženja, što bi rekli loše vođen s polja, kome je teško da savlada svoje ponašanje, da ima namernu pažnju. On je za pet minuta gubio svako interesovanje, gubio je motivaciju i bilo je jako teško da da se prihvati uopšte bilo koju aktivnost duže od dve minute. Dalje? A, ok. Tada ja predložil jeho mami poigrati s njim, posrevnovati se s njim v vypolnjenju zadanji na vreme. Razumijec, pri etom zadanji nužno bilo vypolnjati ne toliko bistro, kako on privik, no pravilno i akurat. Вначале это были такие совсем простые задачи. 
в разных видах деятельности. Они там писали на скорость, рисовали, резали, занимались, значит, аппликацией и прочими другими. Лилепка там тоже присутствовала, много чего было. Вот. Вначале это были простенькие задачи, потом они стали усложняться по содержанию. Но незаметно для самого мальчика. Ну, понятное дело, что поначалу мама в некоторых случаях поддавалась. Более того, и вот тут самое важное, она имитировала те затруднения, которые испытывал сын, и обращалась к нему за помощью в тот момент, когда он решал свою задачу. То есть как к учителю, как к наставнику. Ребенок в это время был вынужден работать за двоих. Он при этом вначале вообще отторгал вот эти маминые обращения. Говорит, мама, ну, ну что ж ты не понимаешь, это так просто. Но при этом постепенно стал проявлять все больше и больше педагогической инициативы в отношении мам. В том числе ставить для мамы новые задачи и, как выяснилось, потом для себя. Оказалось, что это очень даже здорово. Учить взрослых, а многому при этом исподоволь учиться u nich. U ovoj situaciji sam pozvao majku da se igra sa detetom, da se neko vreme takmiči s njim u izvršavanju zadataka. U ovom slučaju zadaci su bili ne samo da budu završeni, nego da budu i brzo, nego da budu tačni. U početku su to bili sasvim jednostavni zadaci, crtanje, lepljenje, kolaži, da bi prilično lako mogao da ispuni dečak zadate uslove. Onda je priroda zadatka počela postepeno da se usložnjava u sadržaju, gotovo neprimetno za dečaka. I šta više majka je podlegla u nekim slučajima, ona je ušla u sledeću igrovnu situaciju, imitirala je poteškoće svog sina i obratila mu se za pomoć u trenutku kad je rješavao svoj problem. Dete je u roku kojim je dodeljen bilo primorano da radi za dvoje. Istovremeno pokazivanje sve više pedagoške inicijative u odnosu na majku, uključujući postavljanje novih zadataka za mamu, kako se ispostavilo. I ono što je važno, ispostavilo se u stvari jako dobrim to što je on podučavajući odraslog postepeno i sam učio. I ušao u potpuno drugu ulogu u ovoj situaciji od uloge onog koji sluša drugog i mora da uči ulogu onog koji podučava. I would like you to give us some, we are not in such a hurry, so I would like you to give us some conclusion or something, if you wish. Всего одна фраза. Две. Значит, в итоге к мальчику вернулся энтузиазм вот прежний, а привлекательность для него приобрели туда емкие задания. И мама таким образом, буквально играючи, помогла сыну найти в деятельности главное – самого себя. А он нашел в ней способ решения серьезных проблем, которые осложняли его жизнь и препятствовали развитию. То есть силой воображения он увидел себя в маме, а маму в себе. И тем самым взял ситуацию под контроль. Спасибо. Я на этом завершаю. Ono što je važno da u ovoj situaciji je kroz igru zapravo dete koristeći svoju maštu ušlo u drugu situaciju, postiglo kontrolu nad svojim ponašanjem jer je snago mašte video sebe u svojoj majci i majku u sebi. I na taj način je uspeo da reši jednu složenu, komplikovanu situaciju za njega i za njegov svakodnevni život. Na ovome i završava. Thank you. I was I was thinking I was taking notes all the time, but I don't think we need some English translation. And in the same time, I'm not sure I will be able to give it. I mean, uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, we all caught the the gist of this presentation. And what uh, I particularly uh, find interesting is this uh, very subtle, very subtle, very important, very fundamental relation between creating something new out of something old, uh, giving this zone of proximate development to play, to, to uh, 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 work so hard to everything even in this situation helping helping mother and child to uh, 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 
make their relation better. Okay, thank you. Do we have some? Do we have some comments or questions? Uh, all together, I want to uh, uh, Sanya. I would like and Isidora. I would like to to uh, make a, a, a short briefing with you, uh, since we don't have Monica here and she's not. She's our uh, presenter and she's not here. We can make a few sentences about her, introduce her. Uh, that that way we will uh, somehow uh, um, uh, share the time. So we will have more time for discussion uh, with Anna and with Isidora and with Vladimir. So I would like to uh, uh, invite other participants if somebody wants to uh, uh, give some feedback to Vladimir. Uh, yes, uh, Monica uh, has some technical problems uh, and uh, she will be tomorrow in session three. Uh, so we have uh, more time for discussion. Thanks for Vladimir. Uh, this is very important, everything that he said to us. I think that is uh, a good time for discussion, for some questions. I have one question for uh, our colleague. So, Boena, you thank, you very, thank you very much. So, thank you very uh, much. Boena, you are moderator and uh, Isidora also. Uh, we can maybe hear uh, the other uh, authors, um, Anna and Isidora, and uh, in the end we can uh, discuss uh, all together. I have a comment, if, if it's okay. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I don't speak very well Russian, so I understood, of course, uh, through the translation from Vesna. Uh, I don't have a question, I actually just have a comment. Uh, because while you were speaking, I had some thoughts and I was relating the topic uh, of your presentation or actually your speech to the things that I've been uh, doing while I teach uh, at the Academy. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you uh, from this um, point of view that has been very useful for myself because while you were speaking about imagination and you were mentioning all the uh, examples for you know the spoon and the, the plate and the everything else uh, I just thought of Kuleshev's uh, workshops and uh, you know Eisenstein's theory of uh, editing and the, the thing is that I use this uh, experience or knowledge that is that's coming from another uh, artistic field from film from cinema to photography which is fine art and I try to relate these uh, different um, fields and different artistic disciplines in a way and uh, so that's just a thank you for this kind of um, reminiscence and the one the other thing I just wanted to say uh, you were speaking about uh, the imagination and the culture and I was constantly trying to relate that to art so uh, when it comes to you know speaking about culture imagination how those two are connected and important for each other and trying to figure out where is art in that uh, equation, where, where, where is the place of art, because art is something different. And then I just thought of uh, Joseph Boyce and his statement that every man can be an artist, so maybe there is a clue in, in this um, uh, opinion or this statement from the famous artist, I don't know. But it's something that just uh, made me think of other topics, and I thank you for it. I will say to the person, Pitanje koliko više neka konstatacija, ono što je meni palo na pamet, znači vezi između uh, mašte i kulture je jasna, jel? Uh, ali ja stavno imam potrebu da negde stavim i umetnost kao pojam u tu, u tu jednačinu, ali kažem nije pitanje, mislim trebalo bi zaista sve dosta vremena da se eventualno to nešto razmutri, prosto kao neka eto, zabeleška ili ideja možda za ne, ne, neku sledeću konferenciju ili za ove, sledeće neka razmatranja. Prosto bilo mi je korisno da čujem i ovako nešto. Ja mogu samo da dodam ovaj, da se ovaj tekst i kompletniji ovaj tekst koji je pripremio profesor Kudrjarcev i ja mogu da prosledim na srpskom jeziku potpuniji zato što ima ovaj, i detalja koji se odnose na, na pitanje poruke i prenosioca kako nekim običnim aktivnostima možemo da prenesemo poruku i kako moramo da se stavimo u poziciju drugog adresanta, kome pošto sledimo, kome dajemo poruku i to je u stvari to da uđemo u onog drugog i da to razumemo, to je u stvari a naravno da je umetnost i u programima kojima se bavi, on se bavio i psihologijom stvaralaštva i dečje kreativnosti kao profesor, pošto 
ja imam 20-godišnje iskustvo saradnje sa profesorom, prosto neko ko se bavi sa pozicija Vigotskog, naravno da ne može da preskoči psihologiju umetnosti i sve ono što nosi kultura i programe kojima su radili. Tako da ima puno mogućnosti, ja mislim i prilike da u budućnosti onda više i šire svi zajedno možda sarađujemo. Hvala. Hvala, hvala svima. Thank you everybody. Thank you Vladimir for your important presentation. We, uh, I hope we will have time and opportunity to continue somehow. Thank you, Vesna, for this wonderful... Because Vesna, Vesna says she cooperates with Vladimir for 20 and something years, but I know Vesna is an excellent translator and developmental psychologist for longer than 25 years. So, Vesna, thank you, too, for this uh, wonderful translation. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible if that wouldn't you. So, so I know you. So I know you know uh, what you're talking about. So Vladimir, you had an excellent translator. Thank you. Thank you both. And now uh, uh, maybe it's time to introduce Anna Marjanović Shein. Welcome, welcome, Anna. Uh, Anna, uh, we are very happy to have her here. And uh, uh, Anna is very active in the field of education, psychology, psychology of creativity. And she's, she's, uh, uh, she presented us a very interesting presentation about uh, some sort of uh, uh, her understanding of education and some critical approach to education. And she proposes some change of attitudes within education context and education system. So Anna, you can tell us more uh, uh, about this idea. Uh, we heard your presentation. What would you like to add to us? What you find important? Thank you, first of all, for every, uh, everyone for inviting me. Uh, I can speak both in English or in Serbian, whatever you would prefer. Uh, it's easy for me. So, Bojena, Dalma Engleskom, Dalma Srpskom. Vladimir, are you listening to us? Uh, Bojana, Bojana, uh, Kresimira, uh, mora da sluša na engleskom, a mislim da ćemo se sve da prati. Kresimira, Razumem. it will be in English. Uh, sorry, I just have a question for you, Krasi. Uh, did yeah. you understand uh, uh, that uh, uh, our colleague uh, Vladimir said uh, on Russian? Yeah, I, I had some, some classes in Russian in school, so I... Yes, also, uh, we are that generation, <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, but it's, uh, you, you, should, you, you don't need to uh, translate from Serbian to English for my, for my sake. I, I think I can follow. Okay, let me continue in English. It would be best, best for yes. everyone. Uh, okay. So, um, th uh, as I said, thank you very much. I watched all the presentations that were online and uh, I, I was impressed, and even now with the, uh, Vladimir's uh, uh, talk, about one uh, kind of a theme that goes through all of them, including mine. And this is uh, the theme of uh, the re relationships between the teachers and the students, or relationships among people in communication, or relationship, uh, what does imagination mean for these relationships? And the, for, for Krasi is really a relational thing is about responsibility and the values that uh, that are um, uh, transmitted in um, the the, the um, in, in the process of education of the conservers, and also for Monica Miller is this relational anthropological uh, yeah, approach. And so my approach is also coming from the relational. And I'm very uh, uh, influenced by Bakhtin, also a Russian philosopher, and his dialogism where this uh, yeah, uh, ethical relational aspect uh, of uh, yeah, human relationships is the, the top priority. So um, what I would like to add, you all watch that, is that what I was trying to do in my presentation uh, is to translate dialogism into the art education mm -hmm. in the sense of really very basic kind of like processes. Uh, what I see is 
uh, educational re relationships throughout the, um, we could even say whole history, a very uh, authoritarian or authoritative relationships where one side knows everything and the other side knows nothing and then in a sense has uh, uh, one side has not only the knowledge but also has a uh, uh, assumes the moral uh, um, uh, authority over the others telling them what to do how to do it and why to do it and in that sense even the responsibility is actually on the teacher and i think that uh, uh, dubrovka now mentioned it that uh, in, in a sense or implied it, that it's a responsibility of the teacher, but not something that has to be transferred to the student as given. So um, Bakhtin, uh, or not Bakhtin, uh, in my uh, uh, work with uh, Eugene Matusov uh, about the Bakhtinian thing, we, uh, dif uh, we differentiate between two kinds of responsibility. In English, it's very easy to say it. In Serbian, it's not so easy to say it because it's the same word. And in English, it's two, uh, two kinds could be explained as responsibility, which is a critical dialogical stance that a person takes about her or himself uh, standing behind what they did and why is that good? So it's an ethical stance. And the other kind of responsibility, which is accountability to somebody else to fulfill the duties uh, that are given to the person or by another person or by the situation. So you're accountable, um, in, in a sense of a polagati uh, rachunet. Uh, like, like, did you do what you were told to do? Did you do it the right way? And somebody else tells you it was the right way. So in th those are completely different ways of understanding responsibility. In one sense, uh, one is authorial responsibility, where a person uh, judges by themselves what is good and why is that good and can answer for that because they stand full heart and mind be behind that. Another one is you do it because I told you kad porasteš kašće ti se samo. And so this is a very big ethical question in uh, education for me uh, and for dialogism because we all are kind of like trying to say, okay, uh, the students will slowly, as uh, Krasi said, over a long time come to something. And Krasi spoke most of the time about intimidation, fears, and feeling uh, the students' feeling of being uh, not good enough about something what uh, otherwise we call deficit model, because there is a standard that you have to fit into. And so you are looking at the gap between that standard and how well the student fits into that standard. So it's a deficit model. Where is a, how, how much somebody is far away from being full? Well, if you turn things around and say that uh, the, the goal of education should be to help every person develop their own personal ethical stance in life, and not only ethical in the sense of uh, uh, relating to people in some very huge, uh, morally difficult situation, but in every possible uh, way of a uh, part of life where you stand for what you are doing and because you know why you are doing that. And, and that comes not only from a person, but a really in a dialogical relationship with other people where you can test your ideas against other alternative ideas or test your views against other alternative views. It's not, you know, bahato, as we would say in Serbian, like uh, 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 arrogant saying, I'm doing it because I want to do that. But because you, you are in, in a culture that listens to you and you listen to the others as equals, uh, equal uh, people of equal rights, not equal people, but have equal rights of uh, 
opinion. And so that is what the, what is the bottom of my presentation. In all, not only our education, these kinds of teachers are very rare that turn this around. I had a, uh, a very, very good luck to have in my high school in Belgrade a professor, uh, several professors, and some of them you will even know. For instance, uh, um, uh, so Boena, so to ime mi, but to je naša Boena, so kako se prezivalo se, predavala je sociologiju in Srbijan, and also our professor Olivera Zečević, who always said, start from, oj, budi svoj, be yourself. So, what do you think is the motto? And it's a sincere question of a, of a teacher to the student, not what do you know, but what, what do you think? And your opinion is very important because it's a uh, where we start everything. And, and because I experienced that, uh, I was always attracted and probably many of you had good teachers that you loved because the teacher was on your side. So uh, also another thing that uh, I want to draw from Dubrovka, who said something is this, um, no, it was not Dubrovka. It was, no, I don't know who said about enthusiasm. No, it was, it was actually Monica Miller. I'm thinking of her presentation. Enthusiasm uh, between uh, the teacher and the student. And that enthusiasm, it really is this feeling of being uh, not only respected, but being put on equal stands with another person where what you are saying, doing, uh, uh, presenting uh, in any form. And art is very important here because art is always much stronger about something new and something creative. Something new, uh, to recognize that as something important, as something significant, is much harder. Uh, especially to recognize it in a child, because by default, we think that children come from not knowing, and uh, which is in education, actually, instead of being good, something bad. <laughs> uh, so uh, people feel intimidated because they are in some way uh, ridiculed, even very slightly. So if you create a situation where people can feel not intimidated, but feel that they are welcome to, the sky is the limit of their imagination. There is nothing stupid that can be said, but we can discuss it if it's discussion or we can discuss it through the visual art or with the musical art, like in jazz improvisation or in dramatic art where, where you can dare to improvise and not feel that everybody's gonna laugh at you. Then the situation is turned around and where the student then uh, can feel as uh, what my also professor of a Serbian language and literature in the fifth grade of school on the first day when we entered, he said, I will treat you as my young colleagues. And he told us, we, drage kolege, we were 11 years old and he was deadly serious. And this is what uh, what my whole presentation is based on. So far from me. <laughs> Thank you, Drage Kolege. Uh, Anna. Da. Uh, I have one very simple question which uh, appeared. You mentioned equality and it is evident now uh, that we have many, many terms assumed behind this, this term equality in education. How do you see equality in education? You said, okay, we are different, we are not the same. We understand that it's not equality. What is equality? I see equality uh, as ravnopravnost, equal rights. In English, that's only like that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean, uh, it assumes that people is different. It assumes that, uh, let's say, you know more here, and I maybe know something else here. But uh, e equal rights uh, among people is assume 
that I will give you a uh, respect and space to, uh, to express yourself. And I will take it seriously into account when I am forming my opinion. I will not say, oh, you're wrong or you're an idiot or like you don't know anything or wait a moment. I can say, let's test our ideas. This is a, uh, not only a um, verbal, because it's in every stance of uh, people toward each other, how, how people respect each other. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I hear about uh, people feeling intimidated, fearful, I'm not blaming anything, Krasi, or you. You are put in a situation. We are living in a system that requires people to finish something in three years that you know and they know and everybody knows is not possible. And uh, or at least is not fair because people are different. So uh, equality means uh it means being aware and respecting people's differences and creating education that fits the student, not trying to fit the student into our molds. My mother used to talk, uh, and you in Belgrade and, and Novisan maybe heard of her, about the stu uh, 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 učenike, uh, uh, process, processira, uh, uh, an object of pedagogical action. Mm -hmm. In that sense, the student is not being treated as another person, but as an object to be formed. Even our word obrazovanie, and also in Russian, means to form somebody. And any kind of forming of another person is always forceful and always violent. Mm -hmm. Even when the person themselves want that, but then they, it's their moral a responsibility to themselves to say, okay, I'm going to put myself through a strong diet to lose 10 kilos. <laughs> okay, that, that's their decision, right? Uh, but if I say you have to and I'm going to starve you to lose 10 kilos, then it's ethically dubious, <laughs> you know. So, and uh, so many things in education we approach with this ethically dubious because we know we know better that people must do something. I, I think I, I think this question of equality, because equality as well as democracy exchange became a too big and too unclear unclear uh, uh, group of terms. Yes. So, uh, how I feel, what is important for all of us authors and participants here is uh, the among others, is the matter of equality, equality uh, between humans, equality in education, education somehow uh, 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 make people unequal in advance, like you are, you are down, I'm up, I'm teacher, I'm more important mm -hmm. than you are, I can decide about your destiny, how it works. Mm -hmm. So it's important to clarify, to make some fine, fine mm, tuning of this term for all of us. Yes. Yeah, thank there you. is in English also two terms, one is equality, the, the other one is equity. And the best illustration of the difference between them is uh, to say, to treat everybody as equal if they are not equal. In a sense, let's say, uh, you will, uh, 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 everybody uh, can uh, get the same amount of money for certain things. Like you will get $20 a month for doing this and that, regardless of the needs of the person. In, uh, in uh, education, we do understand this at the, at the level of special education, that some people need more or need different, and that treating them the same as others is really bad for them. But actually, I try to, uh, to, to say it's, it's bad for everyone being treated as equal. Okay, uh, we can, uh, ec equity is treating people according what they need in a sense, uh, 
like if there is a fence and you need to know to see something over the fence then you would give somebody one stool uh, and another person you could to give two boxes because they are short and another person doesn't need any box but they will all look over and be able to see over the fence that's an illustration i i can find it for you and but there is one further level is like maybe somebody doesn't even want to look at the fence and to accept that that's the thing, that they are interested in something completely different. So those are kind of fine tuning about what does it mean equality is to be aware of people's needs. And, you know, it's an old saying, svakom prema njegovim potrebam. Uh, and some people need uh, tutoring in math and some people need tutoring in art uh, skills and some people say well i will never want i don't want to learn to play piano when when you think about our school today we think of certain things as as uh, something that we must force everyone to learn let's say math at least basic arithmetics and other things that we don't have to force anyone if they don't want to for instance to play piano or to uh, become a uh, artist of this or that kind but why not uh, why not imagine in some other culture possibility that piano is this basic instrument and, and anyone who doesn't play piano counts as not educated and whether they want to to have math or not uh, it's up to them so our cultures uh, are in many ways arbitrary because also we know that during uh, historical periods or in different uh, uh, countries or in different cultures, different things are important. And, and we all know that some people, uh, there was also a wonderful presentation about what is talent and I am looking forward for that. A wonderful thing to think about, like is talent something that's also culturally acceptable where we see cultural importance and other people who are talented in other things are never recognized as talented because that doesn't matter for the culture. You know, uh, so, something like that. Uh, so this is where I see things as equal, e being equal mostly in the sense uh, of having equal rights for your needs that would be taken into account in education seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I think uh, that now um, what has been crystallized from all those, those uh, 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 discussions are the topics of equality. Uh, you mentioned need, and, uh, but we understand that need, how it is treated in education as a fixed situation. A need is a process. It's in development. As Vladimir said, it's influenced by cultural interaction, interaction be between the children. So what is really need is another topic we can think yes. about. But, <laughs> but now, it, it becomes more and more complex, but I'm happy with that. Uh, I would now invite Isidora because we are running out of time and I'm asking, I have feeling that uh, Maybe I am wrong, but just reading your faces, I have feeling that Krasimir and Vladimir would like to add something. But uh, I would, yes, I would uh, uh, now invite Isidora, uh, and after that you too can comment uh, our this our general questions or whatever you feel feel. Please feel free to participate now, Isidora. Would you like to say something short about your work? Mm. Yes, uh, thank you. But uh, I have some comments and I try to connect my presentation and Anna's uh, presentation because maybe it seems a different topic, but I don't think so. Um, well, uh, Anna said and Bona Yus also said uh, uh, on the beginning of the conference that uh, we have a different presentation, but in the same way uh, we talk about a similar thing. And uh, um when Anna talk um, uh, uh, when I when I saw Anna's presentation, I realized that uh, you also talk about the essence of teacher horizontal learning process. Uh, because you talk about dialogue, dialogue uh, 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 which ena uh, enables participants to uh, perceive their uh, practice from different perspective uh, perspective. 
različiti perspektiva, perspektivi, yeah. to understand it in, in the new way. And you also talk about interaction, and it is very important in that process of uh, horizontal teacher learning, because it, uh, they building common meanings, uh, knowledge and values as a basic for developing and improving practice. And uh, you talk about uh, establishing interpersonal relationship, uh, 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 which means uh, trust, mutual support and collaboration. And uh, that is the, the crucial thing uh, in the process of horizontal le teacher learning. So I, I think that it is connecting with, with uh, this process of learning uh, also. Uh, this is only comment, maybe uh, not a question, ju just a comment. Uh, if you are, uh, uh, agree with me, Anna. Yes, to, the, to a certain point, but I'm not going to go into that. But <laughs> okay. Then, oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, my presentation uh, was, uh, uh, you saw it, uh, uh, my paper focused on horizontal learning in the function of teacher professional development from the arts teacher perspective. And uh, I try to analyze teachers horizontal learning current practice in Serbia, their experience related to this learning process, as well as its contribution in the context of personal uh, uh, professional development. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I, I can, uh, I'd like to use the brief time that we have for discussion to cover a few very interesting questions that I that somebody wrote after the, my presentation. Uh, one uh, question was, uh, for example, I will choose this one. In your opinion, in what way is it possible to develop and strengthen competencies for cooperation during the education of students, future teachers of fine arts? And uh, uh, I think that it is very important question. I think that teaching activities within the initial studies uh, should be organized in such a way as to enable students to build a proactive uh, a research and self-evaluative attitude, openness for teamwork and dialogue practice. So, uh, therefore, uh, uh, teaching uh, uh, should be uh, designed so that it uh, provides learning through collaboration and teamwork, uh, peer teaching, uh, uh, where students take responsibility for their own learning, develop the habit and need to collaborate through their careers. Uh, also, uh, I think that it is very important to motivate uh, students uh, in researching their own practice, because it can be a, a catalyst for a different view, uh, framing the situation, uh, gaining the uh, insight into how everything can be done in the particular, situ uh, particular situation, and also establish the cooperation with, uh, between, uh, between schools or preschools and the faculties. I think that it is some kind of um, um, organization the, the, uh, on that uh, initial phase. So, uh, uh, do I have uh, more time, Buena? I have a, a few questions after my presentation. So, have I uh, uh, time for one more question? It is also very interesting. Uh, I would like to clear your question so I can write it down. Okay. Okay, uh, so, uh, so I have one more question. Uh, it is, what are the focus uh, that you consider to be important agents of change of our teacher position in our educational system, taking into account uh, the above results of your research? Oh, well, um, uh, maybe it is, uh, connect with the first one uh, with, uh, with um, uh, their initial studies. Uh, I think that it is important about all to empower teachers during uh, 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 well, uh, during um, uh, initial education to develop the necessary competencies uh, to take a proactive attitude and role. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, when I say that, I mean uh, a teacher who uh, uh, re-examines and uh, uh, changes the practice of his own work. Uh, a teacher who, uh, who is ready to create different uh, circumstances in the school and its environment. A uh, teacher who provides himself or herself with the source of support and uh, 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 resources uh, through activities within the teacher association. Uh, in addition of this, uh, the support of colleagues, it, it is very important, support of, from the principals, and uh, of course the support from the educational system, uh, uh, as well as the feeling that learning and the professional development are highly valued in the institution and society. Uh, in other words, there is an effective school's culture and climate. Uh, the, the school culture that uh, promotes horizontal learning of mm. employees, uh, self-evaluation, agency, uh, initiative and proactive attitude of employees, teamwork and collaboration. Uh, it is very important that we have a climate of uh, an institution that uh, implies mutual respect and trust, please. Openness to exchange and mutual support and uh, respect for the diversity of competences. So I think that it is a crucial thing. So, uh, of course, there is a, maybe more. Uh, okay. Thank you, Isidora. Uh, we have, you raised a very important questions and uh, I would like to share with others. I'm following Isidora for more than how long, Isidora? Maybe 15 years. And I'm, I'm very uh, proud of her work because she has very general and very, very, how should I say, scientific approach, which is not blind, very sensitivity in this scientific approach mm -hmm. and uh, now we have five minutes till the end which is not uh, our definitely our deadline but we have in general we have five minutes uh, till the end of this session uh, i would uh, uh, this will be end from my side i would like to repeat you a few questions it is followed with in education but could be followed uh, each question could be followed with what is it in general uh, what is equality in education and what is equality in our lives? What is the need? How we see the need in education? How we see the need in our lives? What is responsibility? How are we responsible? Who is responsible in education in our lives? What is exchange? What is support? What is support for us? What is support in education? What is support in our lives? Okay, now I have feeling uh, uh, that uh, Vladimir and uh, uh, Krasimir, maybe I'm wrong, and Anna, I'm judging your faces, would like to add something at the end. Please don't be worried. We have about, we have 15 minutes in general, but okay, we have, we have. Next session is starting in 20 minutes, so. Let's make something new. Let's finish somehow. Okay, Sanya. Vrena, uh, we can break a uh, uh, time uh, for five or ten minutes. It's not a problem. And uh, I have also uh, some questions for our uh, plenary guests. Uh, it is about everything that Vladimir said uh, uh, in his... Uh, in his work, he said something about Elkonin and uh, about the uh, about the. Just a minute, please. About the activism uh, in art, and uh, uh, I want to ask: uh, Is that uh, contemporary? Uh, contemporary art uh, today that is focused on uh, uh, activism and concept, uh, the more plural uh, uh, field for developing uh, uh, for developing uh, creativity uh, than uh, some conservative concept uh, in past, and uh, also for Anna. Uh, 
can we uh, have some connection between uh, this uh, this uh, social social and cultural concept of Vygotsky and your uh, the logical approach and uh, also everything is focused in the end on in education uh, there's uh, on responsibility of teachers that is idora said so uh -huh. sorry friends are joining to us hello 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 do you hear us okay uh, so this these are my questions. If you have time, you can you can said about that something. Thank you. So uh, let me answer the question about the connection between uh, Vygotsky and uh, uh, cultural historical mm -hmm. uh, approach and uh, uh, let's say Bartini and dialogical approach, uh, where they kind of like go together, and where I see them as going far apart. Uh, I think uh, that uh, that in both uh, approaches uh, you always have a relationship between the person to a uh, uh, to to the larger uh, social milieu in some way, as uh, Vladimir was talking about culture, mm -hmm. uh, it, which creates for the new member of the society tools, uh, uh, symbolical tools, and real tools in through which you can relate to other because all our relationships are ma mediated which Vygotsky talks about <clears throat> and so when we talk about relationships between people they are for me always relationships that are uh, about something the uh, we relate to other people not in general but because of concrete uh, uh, situations in which we want to say something or want to hear something or uh, need something or answer somebody else's need. So you have two uh, orientations that are immediately together. One is what is this about? And the other is how this about changes our relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can uh, yeah, think about it uh, very similar to what uh, uh, if you are aware of the theory of a, uh, a cultural historical activity theory of Irio Engström, where he put that triangle where there is a relationship between uh, the self, the other, and the mediator or the culture. So you have two, uh, you're looking toward the other and you're also looking toward mm -hmm. whatever is this mediator or whatever is this topic. In my own uh, 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 View, views how I started developing is that I'm looking at the topic or what is it that mediates my relationships. For instance, uh, I'm now mediated to you all, not only through the computer and all of that, but with the topic that, uh, that uh, joins us together. We are all interested to find out about the same thing or we assume that it's the same thing. Our, but our relationships may change whether we agree, disagree, where we come or, uh, uh, or when I suddenly say, oh my God, I never even thought about that. This now changes the way how I relate to whatever, let's say, hearing Isidora, what she said, uh, triggered some ideas and like, wow, I never thought of it like that. And so it changes my relationship toward the topic of uh, or the whole issue that we are talking about. So. Uh, <clears throat> when you ask me uh, how uh, it is different between uh, dialogical approach and the uh, uh, cultural historical approach, I think the biggest difference is in assumptions that we can, uh, in Vygotskyan assumption or the whole social cultural approach from Vygotskyan side, we assume that we can read another person's mind. Or we assume that we know what the other person says. We take that for granted. We take for granted that we know what the child thinks or what you think. Or uh, all our assumptions of what we imagine about other people's minds. Now, really, uh, I'm relating to Vladimir's words, imagine, are taken immediately for granted, especially if they come from an adult to uh, uh, 
towards the child. Like we know that this person understands or doesn't understand, let's say two and two is four, or we know it was good for that person because they will think that their thinking will become, or they'll have this value. So this understanding that there is a possibility of the overlap and transparency of another person's mind to us, we take from our imagining other people's minds and then we, we take that imagination for the true. In dialogical uh, 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 Bakhtin's approach to, uh, uh, to the same relationship, the assumption is that other people's minds are opaque to us or not transparent to us, that I really don't know what at this moment Boyana is thinking with her uh, uh, expression on her face. I know she's thinking something, but I have no clue what she might come from, where she starts to eat. And that we are always surprised with another, especially if we actually listen to what they say. And so there is this uh, uh, taking this imagination my imagination, what Boyana is thinking, or what Isidora is now thinking, or what uh, Chris is now, or Vladimir is now thinking, I would have to test it. And I could say, like, uh, is this true that uh, this is what you actually think? And in that is our imagination, but taken with this respect that I really cannot read your mind. I have to check it with you. Mm -hmm. And I may be very surprised that I was not right. And so in that sense, out of this non-transparency of mind, what comes out is the importance of the difference, not the importance of the overlap of our minds or like transmitting another person's the same values or the same thoughts, but being aware that they will be taken different. And it's important to know how different because only examining all these differences among us will actually create the richness of our relationship. And the teacher will not say, I know better than you. Maybe you could say, I know some things longer, and, uh, but let me hear what you think and how you think, because I'm interested to know how you relate to that. Mm -hmm. And then I can tell you how I relate or what I think and why. And then you can tell me why you think is your, and then we can kind of like inch thinking that we fully understand, but being always aware, and that's Bakhtinian. I to you, but then back to me. And I never know how other person completely thinks, feels, or uh, uh, if trying, for, for Bertin was uh, even unethical trying to calculate other people mm -hmm. to kind of like, okay, if I do that, they will do that. And then I will do that. And this is manipulation of another person. <laughs> and finalizing of other persons. So this is where they very, very much different. That uh, the dialogic approach is not finalizing other people, not having a right to final, always trying to say they know something that I don't know, which is important for this relationship. And this is where the respect comes from. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Can I, can I say something? Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to thank you uh, very much for, for your presentation, Anna, because it was truly inspirational. Um, I think I might have expressed myself uh, in, in a wrong way, uh, because when, when I said that um, it is intimidating, I didn't mean that uh, it, the intimidation comes from the education itself or from the limited time that the students spend uh, at, the, uh, at the programs. Uh, of course, we also recognize the fact that they are different persons and we, we actually select them so that they can uh, add to each other in a way that we can get a, a group of students that is uh, diverse in their way of thinking and their quality so that they can com complement each other in a way. And this is extremely important because we do work with different um, objects. So the, the intimidation doesn't come from there. Uh, it, we, we, we do uh, engage in dialogue with the students, or for me specifically, this is extremely important to understand what their needs are so that I can provide them with um, the support that they need. The intimidation comes from the realization that they work with something that is precious or valuable. Yeah. Um, and then uh, how to approach it so that, because there is also a certain expectation that, that they set for themselves that they have to be perfect. 
and this is I think this is the tricky part how to teach them to accept uh, that um, of course you have to do your your best um, and we expect you to do your best uh, but then you also have to learn that sometimes good enough is best so this is uh, yeah that, that was what I wanted to say Thank you so much because uh, I didn't mean to uh, to imply that what you actually do. But uh, and also I had in mind much younger children than when it comes to the uh, uh, education of the uh, young colleagues of our age or something like that. Thank you, thank you, uh, Krasimira. Thank you, Anna. And uh, uh, maybe we have a few minutes. Vladimir, did you want to say something? I have feeling that you want to say something. No. Okay. So uh, uh, we are at the end of our session. Uh, uh, this session is going to be uh, uh, prolonged in next step in some five to ten minutes we will go on another session so we are you're all welcome if you wish to stay on this session session and share this experience all uh, together i would like to thank uh, our sanya who is ex actually the founder and the organizer of this whole event and who <laughs> who is uh, curious to see how it works Good, Sanya. It works excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, in the same time, I uh, wish to share uh, uh, with you. That, uh, I think uh, little by little, uh, in spite of the fact that we are coming from different uh, contexts, from different background, mm -hmm. with different idea. Uh, uh, we uh, somehow uh, uh, managed to open, uh, from my point of view, very, very important, if not fundamental questions uh, regarding not only education, but regarding the human capacities and their development. So uh, I wish to thank you for this experience and wish to thank you to Sanya. Sanya, would you like to, to close this session because you are the boss? You are the you. No, you are the, uh, <laughs> no I'm equal. I'm equal <laughs> with others. Uh, okay, we have uh, in on chat. Uh, we have uh, uh, some comment from uh, our uh, Krasimira. Um, uh, Maria Turk uh, have some questions for uh, our dear colleagues. So. Uh, Maybe we can uh, give them a few minutes uh, to change the uh, question and answers. And then we can end this yeah. session. Okay. I'm, ha I'm happy with this situation. Go on okay, talking. Yes, thank you. Yes, Maria I, and Classic. What, yes, hello. Uh, what I noticed as once a student of conservation and restoration is that uh, teaching approaches in Serbia for example, in Belgrade and in Novi Sad has different, they differ. And each approach uh, has its advantages and dis disadvantages. For example, not enough emphasis is put on obligations of conservator circled by law in the protection of cultural property. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask Professor Frangova uh, a question regarding the content of education in conservation and restoration based on your experience in working with students, what do you think are the strongest and weakest points in the education of conservators on the university that you, that you work on? Um, well, uh, thank you for that. I, I meant that we can take it maybe outside this forum because the, uh, the answer will take a really long time to, uh, to give because there are a lot of things that need to be considered. Right now, the, our biggest problem is that we had one year of uh, online teaching. So uh, currently, we are trying to catch on uh, the, the practical uh, classes that we have. And we, we had to extend our academic year also to cover part of the summer so that we can really provide our students with this practical experience that we need. Um, so to, to answer shortly, 
uh, on your question, um, I would say that both the, uh, the strongest and the weakest part is the practice, depending on whether you get it or not. Um, because it is essential. You have to overcome this... Uh, um, concern that if you touch a pro uh, an object, something bad will happen. Uh, and this, this comes through practice. You can't, you can't just get it through theoretical classes. But um, I think you can get my, uh, my email address from the organizers. So you're very welcome to, to write to me and we can take it further. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, uh, now we will have a short time uh, for break and uh, uh, the new session, the session one will start at uh, 11 and uh, 45 minutes. It is uh, for four or five minutes we have time for break. So uh, I uh, need to say uh, that you this is a very inspiring session and uh, thank you uh, all of you for your participation and uh, this is just the beginning uh, of uh, our uh, dialogue uh, and uh, cooperation in the time that is coming thank you all of you uh, see you for uh, five minutes uh, uh, we have the other authors and participants uh, on the session one. Goodbye.